Namo Buddhaya, welcome. In this video, I'm sharing my learnings from the Middle Discourses 40. Uh, the, the title of the discourse is the Shorter Discourse at Asapura. The link to the complete discourse is given in the description. You can read the full discourse. Now, this discourse is basically about uh, Buddha giving instructions to mendicants uh, who have left their lay life and came to homelessness that what their conduct should be. You know, so what basically is that, you know, how the Buddha designed this whole system of Sangha was that there were mendicants who were pure in conduct and who asked for alms food from the lay people. Lay people gave them alms food and in return, the mendicants were supposed to teach the lay people uh, the Dhamma. So the, the lay people used to treat the mendicants with utmost respect. So Buddha wanted that the mendicants should also live up to that expectation what the lay people had of them, of living a life which is free from defilements. So in that regard, Buddha gave this discourse. Now, this discourse, though it's aimed for mendicants who are part of the Sangha and who are, you know, who, who have left their uh, homely life, still it has some kind of uh, uh, lessons for us as a lay people and I will take up those lessons uh, uh, towards the end of the video. So, uh, Buddha says, that uh, mendicants people label you as ascetics and when they ask you what you are you claim to be ascetics uh, so given that claim that we are ascetics we should practice in a way that is proper for an ascetic uh, the way our label this way we our label will be accurate and our claim correct any robes arms food lodgings and medicines and supplies for the sick and supplies for the sick that we use will be very fruitful and beneficial for the donor and our going forth will not be wasted, but will be fruitful. That means Buddha is saying that if we live a proper life, then whatever the lay people is giving us, they it will benefit the donor because they should get the merit of the, what they are offering. You know, they could have uh, uh, needed that particular amount, that particular money, but they are donating it. So they should get the merit. So Buddha always said the merit is always dependent upon, you know, what the receiver is how, how good a conduct of the receiver the on the the merit also depends on that so buddha says that our as a mendicant our conduct should be proper and so that the donor receives the merit and also our going for that means our going forth from the lay life to the homelessness will not be wasted our the, the whole effort that we are make, making will not be wasted so then buddha said how does a mendicant not practice in the way that is not that is proper right what is the wrong wrong uh, thing that mendicants do so Buddha says, there are some mendicants who have not given up covetousness, ill will. Covetousness is desire. You know, the I want it, grasping. Ill will, right? Ill will, irritability, hostility, disdain, contempt, jealousy, stinginess, deviousness, deceit, corrupt wishes and wrong view. These stain, defect and dredges, dreads of an, of an ascetic are grounds for rebirth. So all these things that a mendicant has, these defects, these faults make become the grounds of which due to which the ascetic bonds in lower worlds. So Buddha was very clear that our conduct and our, you know, these qualities determine our future birth. No amount of prayers or, you know, worships or rituals will come into the picture, right? So, so that is what Buddha is saying. So Buddha says that I say that such a mendicant is can be compared to a kind of a weapon called dead bone, double edged, weighted with. So it's like a Buddha says that any mendicant who like wears a yellow, a yellow robe and still has these kind of negative qualities is like a deadly weapon who looks very good from the outside but is deadly within, right? Then Buddha says that you know if you take then. Okay, how does a mendicant practice in the way it is proper for an ascetic? Buddha says three things you have to do. First, and this is where we can also draw an inference. Though we are from the lay life, but we can also draw an inference. Number one, gives up covetousness, ill will, irritability, hostility, disdain, contempt, jealousy, stinginess, divitousness, deceit, corrupt wishes and wrong view. Right? That is first. Giving up. See, giving up is a very, very important thing that Buddha has said. That the moment we decide to give up these things, we create a powerful kind of a reverse karmic force, right? So we are like our karmic force has been, has made us come here to where we are now. But this creates a reverse karmic force, right? Giving up, like giving up killing, giving up lying, 
giving up sexual misconduct right so that's giving up is a very powerful thing in one of the discourse buddha says that does the, that giving up if you take that intention that is very very powerful right second so first is give up all the negative qualities right second purify they see themselves purified from all these bad unskillful qualities right that means once they are purified then they see themselves purified and then joy springs up and rapture springs up and tranquility springs up bliss springs up and the mind becomes immersed in samadhi that is the second third so once the mind is immersed in samadhi third they meditate spreading a heart full of love in all directions right meditation and spreading that love the loving kindness to everyone to all beings may they be free of suffering may they be at peace right okay so this is basically the teaching and uh, some main important lessons for us as a lay person i have just po pointed out a few lessons what i could uh, take from this number one don't be in a rush to become an ascetic right uh, uh, and this is what i observed in sarnath also you know uh, when i visited sarnath i saw a lot of monks but they were totally disinterested in actual pursuit of the knowledge i didn't see them spreading dhamma i just saw them you know wasting their time and also i said it's better to be an ascetic like that it's better to be in a lay life fulfilling all the responsibilities of a lay life and practicing whatever we can practice right so it's like do not be you know i had this fascination about being a ascetic maybe from my previous lives i had i had been an a, a monk in my previous lives so i had this fascination even in this life but after my visit to sarna that fascination went away that i can do whatever work i have to do by living a home life not a problem so don't be in a rush for becoming an ascetic it's more important more than the wearing of the robe it is more important to clear the defilements right that is first second focus on your conduct friends we have to always keep inquiring within have, have i been able to reduce my anger have i been able to reduce my hatred today have i been able to reduce these kind of lower tendencies that i have see all of us have you also have i also have so we have to keep re reflecting and keep working on on you know and we are our best judge you know we are you know the most best judge of our our you know where we are right now if we honestly ask ourselves we will get our answers so let us try to focus on our mind and the qualities of our mind and let us move from the negative qualities to the positive qualities from the darkness to the light right third is focus on a regular practice right have a regular practice of your meditation mindfulness precepts keep coming back to the noble eightfold path keep studying the dhamma that regular practice we have to maintain at our end right because then only we will be able to uh, let go of the negative qualities and imbibe the positive qualities sec fourth one more, more thing i will just say don't give undue respect to anyone who is just wearing the robes right just wearing the robes you know just just don't get too much fascinated about them and you know give them too much respect because there are a lot of people who are like uh, real genuine people and there are people also who are you know just they are just wearing the robe right so just have an even mind don't make you know gods out of people and uh, uh, give respect but not undue respect right so there are some few learnings that i had from this discourse uh, though it's more aimed for the ascetics it has its lessons for lay people as well do please read the discourse and uh, share your learnings or uh, whatever your insights are in the comment section i'll be happy to hear them thank you so much for watching this video namo buddhaya namo